Today I'm going to do a city skyline inspired by the number pi. Today happened to be March 14th, so we celebrate Pi Day. Now, the number pi is pretty complicated. It's a never-ending, never-repeating number. So I have this handout to help. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this graph paper. And I'm basically going to graph this number. So you can see all my little squares. I'm going to start. I'm going to pick this one right here. So I'm going to put a little L there like I'm starting to surround that box. The first number in pi is 3. So I'm going to make one, two, three dots. So I'm making a column. I'm going to go up and over, just like that. And this is going to be my baseline, this one right here, this line. So I'm just going to draw out a few rows out there, a few columns out. So the first number is three, then it's one. So I'm going to put one dot, then it's four, one, two, three, four. So I'm going to go like this. I found that it's easier if I do a few of my columns and then outline them like that. So after four, I have one, down and over. Then I have five. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, and over. After five is nine. And if you think about math, it's never going to be higher than nine or it would bump it over to the next column and make that one go up. So the tallest any of our buildings will be is nine. So I'm on nine now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Up and over. After nine is just two. One, two. I'll come down and go over. Next is six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Up and over. Next is five, and you can always, instead of counting up, just go, oh, that one was six, the next one is five. Then three, one, two, three, and five. Now what I have here is the beginning of this nice cityscape. So I did my first line, and I noticed that it's easier. I kind of do this. This is actually the first 100 numbers of pi. So I'm going to slide it down to the next row. And that helps me kind of keep track. So I'm doing 10 at a time. So I had five, next is eight. And if I know that's five, I can just go six, seven, eight, up and over. Next one's nine, so it's gonna be one more. Then down to seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and over. And now I might just extend my baseline. I was on seven, so now I'm gonna go eight, nine. Boom, boom. Way down to three. One, two, three. Oh, my cats are fighting. Eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Next is four. One, two, three, four. And next is six. Four, five, six. So I'm going to continue. I'm going to go down one line at a time. And I'm going to just go across my paper. You can see my cityscape, and I was able to get through the first one, two, three, four, five. So I did 50 numbers. And when I have a zero, that's my zero right there. There's no column at all. Now, using graph paper, it helps you make geometric shapes, which is perfect for a city skyline. And if you decide not to use pi, you can still follow these lines to help create your cityscape. So. Even if you wanted to add a couple more buildings behind, you could still go up like that and over and down and add some details in. Graph paper is a great tool for artists to create things like something like a cityscape because it helps you make those horizontal and vertical lines which are so helpful in making rectangles and geometric shapes. So next I'm going to turn some of these dots that I made into windows. So I use those to help count out my towers, but now I can connect some of them like that. I could kind of, it's like connecting the dots. I can create big windows and small windows. And if you want 
a silhouette, which is when the light is behind the buildings. And then you can take some of these, and if you're wise, you might take the smaller ones because you have less to color and color some of these in. So if you color in these blocks, you will get a nice silhouette or backlit cityscape. city skyline. I've turned all my dots into windows and doors. I've colored some in to create some silhouettes and backlighting. Added some little roof line details and you'd never know that this started off as a graph of a number. I'm going to use my sharpie because this has all been sharpie and I'm going to put my name down at the bottom before I forget. It helps sometimes to put the year too. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to switch from my permanent marker to watercolor markers. Basically, the Crayolas that we use in class. I'm going to pick markers that kind of represent whatever kind of sky that I want behind my city. So if I want a night sky, I might use some cool colors, maybe purple and blue. Or if I want to have a sunrise or a sunset, I'm going to use some warm colors. Now, I'm not going to color on my buildings. I'm going to go in these negative spaces or background spaces around it. And I'm going to think about the sun rising right here in the middle. So I've got an orange, and I might think about like the curve of that. And I'm going to fill this in. So this marker that I used here was permanent. It's not going to change if the paper gets wet. but Typical Crayola markers are water-based. So I'm gonna start with my sunrise here. I think it'll be sunrise, and I'm gonna pick warm colors. And I'm just gonna fill in that space. Oh, you know what? Before I do that, now typically when you see clouds in the sky, they're not going to be black. But when you have a sunrise or a sunset and the clouds are in front, sometimes they're backlit and they'll look black too. So I'm gonna add some puffy clouds. I like adding the clouds because they add a nice contrast. These are all geometric shapes, lots of straight lines, right angles, and these are nice organic shapes, little puffy organic clouds. Now my clouds are colored in to create silhouettes too. I'm going to continue to add some warm colors and a nice vibrant pink. And I'm going to go around my buildings. I don't have to worry about going around my clouds. I can go right over the top of those. They're nice and solid. Just looking for my colors. Maybe, um, maybe night is fading so the edges will have some blues out here. It's nice where my blue and my pink overlap. I'm getting a nice purple. And I'm going to really try and fill this in. I wanted more yellow, but my yellow marker is not working very well. Ooh, I got a nice blending happening there, too. I'm at home making this, so I can't imagine who didn't cap the marker well, so that marker dried out. Strange. I'm thinking maybe it's just been used a lot. We'll go with that. I'm already getting some color blending. That's really nice. Now you can see I wasn't as neat when I was using my marker as I was when I was filling in my cityscape. But it'll make sense in a minute when you see the next step. All right, the last step is I'm going to use just a brush 
and water. And this works because I use those water base markers. So you can see it's starting to soften already. My markers are gonna blend together. And I can let it kind of overlap my buildings a little bit too. And I can even kind of come down here and make it look like a waterfront, like I have some reflection happening. You can see my sky softening. It looks much more like a sunrise or sunset. And of course, whenever I use water, my cat nugget shows up. He loves water. And it's nice now. My clouds stand out in a nice silhouette. The colors are kind of running together. I'm bring some of that down underneath. And now I have this lovely Pi Day inspired cityscape. There we go. Happy Pie Day!